Yes! So I have the AMC A-List, and what that is is a monthly subscription service wherein uh, for $19.95 a month, more in uh, larger markets, I get up to three free movie tickets a week. And from December 2018 to March of 2020, I saw 177 movie showings in a 66-week period of time, which I think is not too shabby. And then the pandemic hit and don't screwed everything up. But now movie theaters are back and so am I. So it's time once again for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. This, in, this week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 22nd week back in theaters. And in that time, I have seen a total of 40, 40, 40 movies in theaters. I saw three movies this week, which I'm really proud of. Also, a lot of people on Twitter, because I try, I don't do it every time, but I try to live tweet the movies that I go to, because uh, I knew that going to see three movies a week was going to be a very uh, lonesome experience, so I tried to bring Twitter into it. And a lot of people on Twitter see my uh, live tweets and my reviews and everything, and, and I keep hearing the same thing over and over again. It's like, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I want to go see that in theaters. I'm just so hesitant about going back to the movie theaters. Oh, yeah, maybe I'll go see that. I don't know. I'm just still a little bit scared. And it's like, I, I understand your fears about going to the movies. And I would be nervous about going yeah. to the movies, too, if I live in a place where people, if I lived in a big city, if I still lived in Sacramento, I don't know if I'd be going to the movies. If I lived in Phoenix, I don't know if I'd be going to the movies. If I lived in any major city, you know, like any major place, I would be worried about going to the movies. But I live in a very small town in the middle of Oklahoma, and it's just safe for me. Movie theaters yeah. were pretty much empty before the pandemic. So it, I am 100% safe going yeah. to these movies that I do because there's hardly anywhere. If there's 12 people in the theater, that's, that's, that's a packed house as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, this week was a drama week for me. I saw the following three movies in theaters. Will Smith's Oscar attempt, King Richard. Ridley Scott's second movie of the year, House of Gucci. And... Eh, the new Wes Anderson film, The French Dispatch. Now, let's discuss the two movies that have not been chosen as my movie pick of the week. Uh, first off, <coughs> King Richard. This is a really, this is a good movie. I liked it. It was entertaining. In a way, it's sort of a, a this is a Rocky. There's a lot of Rockies out there. Yeah. I'm not just talking about the Rocky franchise. But I think you understand when I say, oh, this movie is a Rocky. Oh, yeah. underdog, no one expects to win. Oh, no way they're going to win. This is a Rocky, and it leads to a big match at the end. And so this movie is a Rocky. And so that's a tried and true uh, format. And it's hard to dislike a Rocky. Yeah. You know, and this was a Rocky, and it was a good film, and there were some really good performances, and I really liked it. But I still stand by my feeling that it's weird to have a movie about the two greatest, uh, I was going to say female tennis players, but the two greatest tennis players of all time, two of the greatest tennis players ever, and have Will Smith star in it. That yes. just feels weird to me. Yeah. And so I, I, I said that on Twitter, and I was complaining about, like, oh, uh, today I'm going to see King Richard, a film about this and Serena Williams that somehow is all about Will Smith. And, and uh, some person, because if you want to know, if you want to know the answer to something on Twitter, just post something wrong. And then a million men will come and correct you. Yes. 
So someone immediately chimed in. Well, the film was actually executive produced by, by Venus and Serena Williams, and they wanted the film to not focus on them, but to focus on their father who sacrificed so much to make sure that they were successful. And that's why the film features Will Smith so much. It's not because, you know, he... And it's like, I okay, thanks for explaining that to me. It's still lame as fuck to go to a Venus and Serena Williams film that's all about Venus and Serena Williams' dad. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm really excited to go see uh, Amadeus. I, I can't wait to see this movie about, you know... Mozart, and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. This is this movie, Amadeus, isn't about Mozart. It's about Mozart's mom. Yeah. Who was like, hey, Mozart, practice the piano. And he's like, oh, mom, I don't want to. That's lame. It's like, no, it, it's a, it, oh, hey, this movie isn't about the guy who cured cancer. It's about the guy who cured cancer's uncle. Yeah. Who was really nice to him. And it's like, oh, if, I, if, if you make a movie about Venus and Serena Williams, I want it to star Venus and Serena Williams' characters and not, like, their really supportive parents. <laughs> I, and I don't think that, I, that, that that's a horrible thing to say. I, I think most people would feel that way. That being said, it's a really good movie. It's a really, it's a really great film. And there were some parts that I marked out. I did get very angry at the film because it made me cry during a Kenny Rogers song. Okay. It really pissed me off. Because the dad suffered so much and, and he was getting the girl to practice tennis and they were practicing at this tennis court which was in the middle of Compton and there was a lot of anger and a lot of violence and the dad sacrificed a lot and during the day he'd practice tennis with the girls and at night he'd go to work and and he he would get beaten up a lot in in this bad neighborhood and he he struggled so much so finally like halfway into the movie where they're driving in a free uh rv to their new home in florida where they'll have everything paid for because they're his daughters are going to be tennis superstars as they're driving in the super expensive RV to their new life. They start playing the gambler okay. and it, it makes so much great uh, thematic sense that this dad sacrificed so much on like a, just a gamble that their daughters would be the best. And now they're going over to this new life and you see him driving off, driving his family to their new happy life together as the gambler plays, and you got to know when to hold him, and it's like, God damn it, you're making me emotional over a stupid-ass Kenny Rogers song, so automatically 10 points from Gryffindor. Yeah. But beyond that, it's a really great film, and I, I really like it. Uh, it's obvious Oscar bait, but also it's a Rocky. You know, you, you, it's a Rocky. Yes. And a really wonderful film. So that's King Richard. Uh, the second movie that was not chosen as my movie pick of the week is House of Gucci. First off, this movie is two hours and 40 minutes. Okay. You better have a lot to say for a two-hour, 40-minute movie. This doesn't have much to say. Most of it is corporate intrigue and family drama and... Uh, the the Gucci fashion empire being run by a family who are constantly trying to take control of the, the family dynasty and money and it, one good thing about the film House of Gucci is that it does a really good job of putting on the screen how I feel about Gucci the brand which is Hey, look at this. Look at everything on the screen. It's flashy and expensive, but underneath it, there's fucking nothing. <laughs> you know, uh, Gucci the brand and Gucci the movie are like, it, 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 it's vain. It's pretty and it's shiny and it's sparkly and uh, it, expensive, 
but there's just there's nothing there. This is yeah. this barely feels like a movie. It's it's just a bunch of fashion drama and corporate espionage, and it, the movie hardly exists. It's two hours and forty minutes of a bunch of nothing happening. Uh, the people, I, I, I dare say a lot of the people who say, a lot of the people who are right now saying, oh, an, an amazing performance from Lady Gaga are Lady Gaga fans. Yeah. Who are saying, oh, I'm super excited for anything they do, but I just, I, I, it's, it's a bunch of famous people doing Varying levels of Italian accents. Jeremy Irons is oh, in there. Jerry. Jeremy Irons is, is in there. You might know him from his most famous work, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Uh, uh, Hua! He's in it. Uh, Jared Leto is nearly unrecognizable. So, okay. So basically, you're saying that House of Gucci is. The premiere scene in *Inglorious Bastards*. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would say that. Where yeah. they were all doing their Inta Italian accents. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The film, the film rides a very thin line between Oscar gold and Razzie gold. Yeah. Well, there's we're a fine line into there. the whole Oscar bait season now. Yeah, yeah. That's why next week I'm just going to try and watch non-Oscar bait. I'm going to go see the new Disney film. Uh, maybe I'll go see that stupid Resident Evil film that came out. Maybe even Clifford, for, for all I care. Just yeah. nothing serious. I don't want any more. We're, we're in award season, and I just don't care. Well, so, even, even the entire slate that you went to see this week, it's all Oscar bait. Yeah. You know, Ridley yeah. Scott sure as shit thought that that was going to be his Oscar movie, which is part of why he's pissed. I feel that Ridley Scott saw the script for House of Gucci and said, here's my attempt at making my own Goodfellas. Yeah. But with clothing and just, like... You can see that that's what he wants, but that it's just not what it, it, it... He didn't land it. Yeah. And I don't understand why to play the part of, like, one of the 55-year-old, fat, balding, overweight, cheap brothers, you got Jared Leto and put him in a bunch of old guy makeup. Why did you do that? Why Jared Leto? You could have hired an actual overwhelming man to play this character. It's like, uh huh, we need someone to play an 82 year old. I know, Timothy Chalamet. Like, why did you do that? Why Jared Leto? And his character is the most annoying fucking character that I've seen in a long time. It, it, like, he should teach. Like, he can be in the next Fred the movie. Yeah. His character from House of Gucci, you can just pick him up and plop him down in Fred 4, Return of the Freds, or something. That is, that is frightening. Yeah, annoying as shit. House of Gucci, it's barely there. It's a whole bunch of nothing. It reminded me of a joke from Louis C.K., who I, I'd hate to quote him because he's a piece of shit, but he has a joke where he... he I went to the opera, and I, I, I sat there, and I watched the opera, and I said, look how much work it takes to bore me. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's basically House of Gucci. It... It, 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 an interesting thing is that there were 12 people in the theater for the first showing of House of Gucci, all women. Not a yeah. single man wanted to see House of Gucci, and I think that says something. I think that, I think that House of Gucci is going to skewer more 
female than male, is what I'm saying. So those are the well, two films. Yeah, you know, I, you, you, you're not. Look, look at how I dress, okay? Yeah. You're not catching me with a movie called House of Gucci the way you didn't catch me with The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. right in the title, you have absolutely nothing that interests me. Yeah. I... Now, if it was the Gucci Ninjas... Ooh. I might be... See? See? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I yeah, might be interested. Yeah. You know? If a stylish pair of stiletto heels explode... I might be curious as to the, what the rest of the movie might be. Yeah. A, this movie is not for us. No. <laughs> I will see... I will see... They call me Bruce 20 times, and I'll see House of Gucci once. That's just who I am. It, 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 if, if the head of Gucci, okay, were to train mosquitoes to attack a coastal resort town, I might be in. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go see that. Uh, I am tripping balls right now just staring at the tickets falling <laughs> in the uh, in in the background here. I'm just tripping balls watching it. It's uh, fascinating. Uh, man, Ridley Scott, he said, man, I've got two Oscar baits coming out this year. I'm going to be walking away with all of it. I can see some, like... Lady Gaga getting a nomination, maybe Adam Driver getting a nomination, but I don't see this movie sweeping, you know? Because yeah. there's just, there's not a lot here, and it's not fun to watch. It's, it, it's an airport movie. It's, uh, you're, you're, you're on an eight-hour light movie, but it's not a film that willing to waste two hours and 40 minutes of my life again. Yeah. So that's House of Gucci. And finally, the movie pick of the week is The French Dispatch, which I didn't fucking see. Okay. I, the French Dispatch ha came out a few weeks ago, and I've been waiting to see it, but it's, sh it's, it's showing at that one theater on the opposite side of Oklahoma City. That's like an hour to get to. An hour, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. It, it's, it's like 70 minutes for me to get from my small town to this one theater. Yeah. Quail Springs Mall. And pre-pandemic, I would do that. Hey, sure. I, you know, 2019, Steve will happily drive 75 minutes to go oh, see... Oh, God, yes. You have and you've done several times. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll drive 75 minutes away to go see the next X-Men movie in IMAX because I get a free keychain. But I'm not that guy anymore. And I just don't want to drive that far to go see... Even if it's for a Wes Anderson film, like, I'm not that person anymore. So, I, so I've been waiting for the French Dispatch to come out at a closer movie theater, and it finally came out at, at a theater, AMC Classic Crossroads 16, I think. It's right in, it, 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 was, it opened in like 1990, and you can tell, because it's all neon and flashy and stuff, and it's also seen better days, because it opened in like 1989 or 1990, and, and it was built in front of a mall which is sit long since closed down. And so that's yeah. kind of sad. It looks like, you know, 20 other malls that are, that are in this country. So, it, but it shows a lot more movies than, you know, my six or eight screen movie theaters here in town. So that's where I went to go see the surprise Disney screening 
like a week or two ago. Yeah. That was fun. So they, I saw that, that starting this weekend, they were showing Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch, and I was all <coughs> excited, and there were tickets Saturday <coughs> afternoon, and I got the okay from the family and from the wife, and Natasha was like, I'll take care of the kids. You deserve this. You worked so hard with the kids and taking care of the family that you go on a Saturday afternoon, enjoy yourself. Here's some money for popcorn. You're going to have a blast. And I went, you know, as the woman that I am, cause I'm basically she, her all the time. Now, Max, can you help them get the new remote? Please. Thank you. Uh, so, so I was really excited and it was, it's about 35 minutes away and it, it, it's like, hey, this, this will be worth it to see Wes Anderson's new film. I'm so excited. And I get there, and I give them my phone, which has my ticket, and they, they look it up, and they say, hold on. I just need to talk to the manager really quick. And the, the ticket lady just disappears, and I'm just standing there. And I'm like, fuck, what's happening? And the manager comes in and says, yeah, I'm sorry. We're not showing this. And I'm just standing there, and I'm like, but I have the ticket. And she says, no, we're not showing the movie, period. We physically could not download it. Wow. So I can give you a free ticket to go see something else, or if you want, you can see another movie that's starting soon. And the only movie that was starting soon was fucking Ghostbusters. So it's like I drove, I drove, not even, no, no, the movie, the movie theater is like 45 to 50 minutes away. It's 35 miles away. Yeah. So it's like I drove 35 miles out of the way just to see the fucking Ghostbusters movie again. Are you fucking serious? I was so goddamn disappointed. I tweeted it at AMC Theaters. They have a customer service line. And, and, and I, I sent a message to them, and I was so fucking upset that, like, I, I came so far to see Wes Anderson's new movie, only to see fan service the fucking movie again. <laughs> it pissed me the fuck off, and I was so upset. And then I came home, and Natasha's like, hey, I got this, uh, 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 really nice, expensive, uh, you know, uh, uh, steak sandwich for you. And I'm like, that's so nice. Thank you. This makes me feel better. And I ate half of it, and I put it in a container, and I set it on the table, and I said, I'm going to save the rest of that for, for tomorrow. And I went to go talk to Natasha, and 10 minutes later, I come back, and apparently our cats have learned to open containers because my sandwich is entirely gone. Oh, my God. And then uh, I'm cleaning that up, and, and, and then I wash my hands, and it burns because I shaved a chunk of my hand off. Yeah. And so it was just, well, I had go, the let's worst. Let's go back to the cats because this is a serious safety hazard. Yeah. Because if they can open up a Tupperware container and get your no, sandwich. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. I was trying to remember the name of it. It was a Philly cheesesteak, and I got it from Domino's, and they're really, really good. And it wasn't a Tupperware container, but those Philly cheesesteaks come cardboard, in, like, like, a cardboard a, container that has, like, yeah, a little like, latch, like a, and it like does pizza, close. Like a pizza box. Like a pizza box. Okay. The, okay, but that's and besides the, the point. If the cat can do yeah. that, the cat can fashion a shiv. Pretty much. You're going to have to the watch cat was out able this. To, this is a The cat was able this to cat on the has table. a serious health risk now. Yeah, the cat was able to get on the table, see that my uh, uh, Philly cheesesteak box was closed, open the box, remove the sandwich from the box, and eat the sandwich on the table. Yeah. So, eventually, I'm going to be seeing the cat, you know, carving shivs, making makeshift tools, and just... I gotta watch my back now, but anyway... Like, yesterday was just the yeah, worst I, luck. I, you, you've got to keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not, like, hot-gluing pixie skip stick tubes together and sharpening yeah. them into a shiv and coming after you. You know, that would... Yeah. That would you well, don't what type want of that a, on your tombstone. 
but I've never heard this before. We're not showing this movie because we couldn't get it to download. Yeah. No. I, I've never heard of anyone say that. And it fucking enrages me that I drove so far just to see the goddamn Ghostbusters movie again. It's getting to the point where I'm noticing small, tiny things. Uh, the kids are driving in the Ecto-1, and they get pulled over by the police, and they don't have a license or anything. Bye, Max. I love you. They don't, it, the kid driving doesn't have a driver's license, and they're like, oh, no, what do we do? What do we do? Look in the glove box. And they look in the glove box, and there's, there's just a Twinkie in there. And it's like, oh, okay, I can now realize that that's a callback to the first Ghostbusters movie. And it's like, imagine this Twinkie is all of the, oh, that's big Twinkie. And like, okay, that's a callback to the first Ghostbusters. Another thing that I noticed is that uh, Egon dies, and so this family goes to this small town in, in this totally Oklahoma and not Canada. And they go into his house, and there's a giant stack of books uh, all stacked up in like this giant tower or pyramid or something and like ooh spooky is that a ghost did a ghost do this one of the books is the sappy teen science fiction romance novel Allegiant okay why is a super smart fucking physicist why does he own a copy of the sappy teen science fiction dystopian sci-fi romance novel Allegiant. That makes no sense to me. Yeah. That's like if you're, if you're making a, a, a fictional film about uh, what's a famous... like do, it, it, If you're making a Doctor Who film and you notice that in his TARDIS he has all of the copies of the Twilight Saga. Yeah. Like, I, the fact that Egon Spengler has a copy of the teen novel Allegiant, I find less believable than tiny marshmallows coming to life. Yes. It's just fucking ridiculous. Anyway, I'm pissed off at AMC Theaters. I'm pissed off at Ghostbusters. I'm just pissed off, is what I am. Bye, I love you. Have fun, okay? Have fun. So, yeah, so that's my movie pick of the week, The French Dispatch, which I didn't get to fucking see. I, I found a bootleg somewhere, and, like, I kind of want to see it, but also I'm just pissed off. That was the one movie I was looking forward to this week, and, and fuck! I'm just upset. I'm maddened. I'm enraged right now. Yes. Ah, okay, so so... So that's it for Steve's stuff of the week. Next week, I'm going to finally see the goddamn uh, new Disney film in Kanto. Frozen for Mexicans. Uh, Rosen. I don't know. And uh, maybe the new Resident Evil. I never saw any of the Resident Evil movies. I don't think I've ever even played any of the Resident Evil games. I have seen Resident Evil being played before. Because I have, I had, no, I have bought weed in the 90s. Yeah. There was always a dealer on an Xbox playing some game, and I always remember it being a Resident Evil. And you can't, you can't just go and buy the weed, you have to sit down with them for like an hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. And pretend you're fucking friends. And so I've seen a lot of drug dealers play Resident Evil, and that's all I know. And, and so I'm not the right person to go see the new Resident Evil film, or maybe I'm the perfect person. I, I haven't even played the game. Hey there, Emerald. I haven't even played the games in a while. That was some pretty-ass pink. Yeah, it was. But anyway. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, so, so I, joins... I wouldn't be... I, I would have to replay the games, although I did enjoy the games. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I might go see that next week. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, uh, that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Join us next week for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week.
and cut on 